Hello and welcome to InfoStack TV, your digital format for InfoStack 2024. We're at the booth of One MOA, and with me is Philip from Archon Firearms. Hi, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. Hi, folks. I'm so happy to be here at InfoStack in Nuremberg. We are actually not far away from here because our factory is based in Carlo Vivari, Czech Republic. So. We only had two hours to drive and here we are. But it's always a pleasure to be here. Thank well, you. So very comfy, I think. Absolutely. So and you brought some very cool looking pistols with you. Not a standard polymer pistol, but something different. So just Absolutely special. please take us through the specs. Sure, we'll be delighted. So we are here thanks to our partner One MOA, of course, who's our distributor also for the German speaking countries, with the exception of Switzerland for the moment. But let me just explain the products real quick. I will focus on some of the main features first and just walk you through the product lineup and model lineup that we have. So let me start off the bat. What makes our pistol really special? Well, it's our patented locking mechanism. We call it AF Speed Lock, uh, which has been around also in some previous iterations of the pistol, but it's really working great. And you know, if it works, don't make it and don't change yeah. it. So this is, this is basically what we are still basing our current design of the pistol on. I disassembled one of the pistols here to quickly show how it works. So, folks, this is actually the only motion that the barrel performs uh, during the whole cycle of the pistol. As you can see, there is no vertical tilting. Uh, the barrel only moves about 8 millimeters forward and back. And what this does is it, it, of course, concentrates the recoil going into your arm. So for recoil management and control of the pistol, this is really phenomenal design. Another important thing is that the locking mechanism doesn't sit over and above the trigger mechanism as would be the case in most mm -hmm. of the uh, striker fire pistols, but it's actually in front. So with that, we achieve very, very low silhouette of the pistol as you can see here. And also we believe that we have one of the lowest bore axes in the industry on a striker fire pistol of only about 12 millimeters. So if you hold the pistol right, you know, pretty high, you really have phenomenal control of the pistol uh, with some of the additional features that I will be explaining uh, in a little moment. So another uh, standout thing about our pistol is uh, our patented modular grip solution. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have really thought through the design from the point of view of a shooter. So firstly, there is a feature which we call tandem actuation point, TAP. And it's actually not something left over from the injection molding. This is really a proper design feature, mm -hmm. which actually enables your hand to close around the grip and hold firmly from the get-go. So it's actually really supportive for the, for the proper hold of the pistol. And the main thing which we innovated on the Gen 2 of this pistol that has been around uh, earlier for a bit is the modularity in the grip where by simply removing two pins from the grip, you slide the whole backstrap assembly off. As you mm -hmm. can see, this is the longest version with two extenders in it. So this would be a full-size length of a grip. And the customer receives with his pistol uh, three different lengths of the backstrap, mm -hmm. plus uh, all the necessary extenders, so that the customer can choose how to build up uh, his or her pistol from basically the shortest configuration, which would be this one, through compact length, all the way to the full size land that I'm showing here. Okay. So that is one of the really cool features that we think is pretty unique in the current uh, pistols out there. And another good thing is that the grip was designed with flat surfaces. Here you see a stippled version, but basically these are flat surfaces because we wanted to enable choice of textures as well. So the customer can choose uh, from different options of grip tapes that we actually have uh, uh, designed and supplied mm -hmm. by Talon Grips out of the United States. But we also have some suppliers here in Europe that makes pretty exciting products. So everybody will find the right fit for, from soft through uh, a little bit more aggressive all the way to the competition uh, ready or for somebody who shoots with a glove, maybe this is basically like your sand sandpaper, you know, hardness of the texture. So this is pretty much allows to build a gun really as every customer wants. And you know the great thing is that they get all these options with the standard uh, uh, product that they purchase in the shop, with the exception of the different uh, grip tapes that they mm -hmm. can purchase either from us from, or from our partners. Uh, the pistol comes, currently it ships with two lengths of the magazine, 15 and 18 round. But now, actually, from this spring, we are also shipping a 13-round magazine for the shortest configuration. 
so that you know this this will be how you can uh, how short you can make your pistol. Still having very good grip space as you can see here, but the pistol in the overall length is is very low, much lower than anything out in the competition there. So again, uh, you know some great options which are available here. Okay. So um, would you tell us a little bit about the slides because I see sure. there's two different configuration of the slide. Correct. And is there a possibility to mount optics on it? Yeah. So we basically have two models. We call this design of the slide with the dimple and angle serrations. This is the type B as better. Uh, the other pistol, which is identical on the inside, but has a bit more traditional uh, design of the, of the slide, we call this type D as delta or duty. As you can see, there is no dimple in the front, the serrations are straight. So basically, this is more an not only aesthetic thing, really, but if somebody prefers you know, the more traditional look and function, they can opt mm -hmm. for the type D, or if they want to use all the cool features like the, you know, uh, and operate the slide forward, I would strongly recommend to go for the type B because it simply, again, is a functional feature where you can do a press check, you can wreck your slide very comfortably. Mm -hmm. So this is the two uh, model uh, families for, for a compact, compact size of a pistol. Now, what we're showing here as a completely new product is our Type A. Now, folks, this is the same lower. So again, whoever already has one of our pistols can easily upgrade to, to this model. We call it Type A as Alpha. The difference is five inch long barrel mm -hmm. and essentially about three quarters of an inch longer slide. So especially for those doing maybe uh, target shooting or generally precision shooting or simply people who will want to have a full size gun, this is basically your option which you can go for. Um, as you mentioned, based, well today it's kind of normal, we, we offer a variety of optic cuts. We cut directly on the slide, we do not believe in plates and similar solutions. So right now we basically support RMR footprint, which would be Trigicons and similar. Uh, Aimpoint Acro P2C2 footprint, as you can see here, very beautiful combination. And uh, the RMS footprint for the shield size, Holosans and many other red dots. So that's basically, uh, as far as optics are concerned, one thing to mention perhaps as, as well is that we, we manufacture our own sights front and rear, but they are Glock compatible, so anybody wants night vision or any other options, they can help themselves from the rich choice on the aftermarket. And uh, of course, we also offer threaded barrels for suppressors, both uh, have by 28 right-handed for those who may have a can mm -hmm. from the United States, or 13.5 by one left-handed for the European standard. And it, what I'm holding here is another new thing that we're actually uh, showing on n 4 and EWA. That is our FDE colored grip. As you can see, it's looking pretty badass. It's actually very, very good uh, tone of the FDE, we think, and I personally really like the aesthetics of this pistol. So uh, lots of new things uh, yep. coming to the market, and be sure that you also uh, stay in touch with our partner here in Germany, One Moa GmbH. Perfect. That was a lot of input on beautiful pistols. So um, thanks a lot, Philip. Um, I think Thank we you. have to... It was a pleasure. Whew, we have to round this up. Um, so um, next up for the one MOA booth, we are visiting um, Inveris Systems. So let's go. Finally, we arrived at the Inveris booth in the second floor. It's on the second floor because we got something very special to show you. With me is Mark from Inveris. Nice to meet you. Good afternoon. So please tell us what does Inveris do? Okay, well, first of all, Inveris is uh, it is based in Atlanta, in Georgia. Uh, we have also have an office in the UK, which is where I'm from. Uh, and we've got a number of different business units. Mm -hmm. One of the business units being our live fire side. We've then got screen-based systems, uh, a reconfigurable desktop trainer, which is where we've got a system in the striker armored vehicle. Uh, we've also got virtual reality system. And finally, our augmented reality, reality system, which is what we're gonna show you in a second. Okay. So it looks quite empty from the outside, I think. Yep. Um, so what can you tell us about the augmented reality system? So the augmented reality system allows soldiers to operate in an environment that can either be scanned into the system or you can have combat wall up we've got like now to obviously give them a, um, an area to move around. Now with the, the AR system, uh, the trainees can actually see reality 
and then we inject targets inside of that. So when you look at the system now, you can see there's nothing in there, but when we go through the exercise later on, you'll see those targets being injected in. And then when we do the after action review, we can actually see where the trainee is looking by tracking his eyes and obviously the direction of where his weapon's pointing as well. So after action review is a real, real bonus on this system. I think so, because um, CQB environments is one of the most hostile environment you can get in and it's very, very hard to train, I think. So this would be the perfect tool to train it. You're exactly right. It's perfect. We can monitor every uh, trainee that goes through, even if you've got multiple trainees, and see where every weapon's pointing and obviously the communication between the individuals as well. Um, this system supports a whole assault team? Or yeah, just yeah, one at the operator? moment, yeah, we've got four soldiers that we can put through. We're only going to put through two through for the demo for you today, uh, but we are going to increase those numbers, obviously, as the systems progress. All right. Uh, and we want to go up to at least platoon and company level. Very, very good. So, um, would you like to give us some more information or shall we just get right into the action? I think you should really see the action because what we're going to do is allow you to look through a, um, a tablet and then you can see what the soldier's seeing and then you'll be able to see the after action review as well. A picture certainly paints a thousand words with this system. Yes, it does. So, let's get into it. Thank you very much. Let's All go. Alrighty. So, um, Mark will just round up the after action report for us. So, Mark. Well, I think you would have seen now how good the system is. You can obviously see the soldier going through the training uh, and then the after action review where we monitor not only where the weapon's pointing, but also where the individual is looking as well. Uh, and you would notice through the after action review, you can see friendly uh, and enemy targets. Um, we only showed one soldier in action there, but if we had multiple soldiers in there, that information you would see for everyone as well. All right, so it was very, very impressive. It's a cool training system. I think it's very, very useful for CQB environments. Um, Mark, thanks a lot for having us. Thank you for turning it was up. Really, really impressive. And now, guys, we are proceeding to the Maxim booth. We are back on first floor, and now we are at the booth of Maxim Defense Industries. With me is Peter Bauer. Peter, nice to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Very pleased nice. to be here. So we already um, met some of your guys at SHOT Show and um, unfortunately we didn't have the time to make a proper video but now we're here at Enforce Tech and now please tell us what does Maxim Defense Industries do and what do you offer? Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, we're very pleased to be here at Enforce Tech on the booth of our partners, One MOA, um, and together we will uh, launch Maxim products onto the European market, principally starting with Germany with our line of CIP compliant rifles. That's the main point of us being here. However, we're also known for our, uh, first known for our components, particularly um, the stocks, the, the CQB and the SCW stocks, and also our handguards, uh, aftermarket compatible with HK, etc. cetera. Uh, we're also a suppressor company, um, and we have various other components, some interesting technical developments in muzzle boosters, etc., for short guns. However, um, principally we're known uh, in the market now for our uh, range of rifles starting in 2019, uh, where we start with the PDX, mm -hmm. which um, if I can just reach for the, the, the catalogue, uh, we have, these are, are the new uh, um, direct suppressed variants, SD line, so these are the latest variation of the PDX which came without the suppressor. Um, however, we work from five and a half inch barrels in AR-15 in three calibers, which is unusual, 556, 300 blackout and 7.62 by 39. So we have a, a wide range of uppers for this particular rifle. And it's finding favor with, uh, let's say, small and niche units, um, mm -hmm. police, military, law enforcement. So this and is the ideal CQB rifle. So especially in the 7.62 by 39 and 300 blackout, I think, because it's very suppressible. Uh, yes, uh, I would say I would say 762 by 39 is the nicest to shoot. Yes, However, you know some customers are tied to caliber. This is the reality. So we make it available and for people to work out what they want, what actually works best for them. 508 is particularly interesting in 300 blackout. It's around the optimum for the caliber. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, again suppressed firing supers and subs. Um, there are particular problems with uh, 300 blackout because there's not a, an ammunition standard for it, but we have mastered this. And um, our, our rifle shoots really, really well in, in all calibers, but you know, particularly with 300 blackout. And again, we go to 10 and 11.5, 10.3 and 11.5, which is about really where we, we call it quits on the AR-15. There's plenty of rifles, good rifles out there in the longer barrel lengths. But this we really make our own, we think. Um, mm -hmm. We are very pleased with the performance of our weapons. So as we talked about before, um, you just mastered it. You get some some of your rifles through CIP proving for the civilian market because, like CIP, is not a thing for um, the um, military market or for law enforcement, but for civilian in Germany especially. Um, so where would you categorize your rifles in? So I um, I touched some of those at Shot Show, and I felt they are very very premium, very well manufactured rifles. Yeah, the, 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 so the, uh, because we started on the, on the um, uh, high power calibre, very short barrel, the rifle has a little more mass than is normal. So it's, uh, the MDX line, PDX line, is a full uh, bullet or uh, machined rifle. It's not, it's not a, a forging, which has typically less material. It's built for strength, so it's a little heavier, more robust, but that really suits the purpose that it's put to. Uh, from that, as you say, we, we've gone into the, the, the CIP compliant line, which is you know, mandatory for European regulation. And we start with the German market, which is frequently the most challenging on the regulation front. <laughs> yes, it is. So, um, you know, we're very pleased to be here. We, there's a difference between a, a SAMI rifle, which is very acceptable in the, in the US, and a CIP compliant rifle on, on a number of standards. And so we have to pay careful attention to that to make sure that the European uh, get the quality that they're used to. And, and in the right frame of standard. So this is why we're launching two versions of the, uh, the MDX and a 12 and a 16 inch barrel. And also, um, maybe interesting, an SR25 type. Uh, uh, like a semi-auto sniper yeah, rifle? Semi-auto DMR sniper rifle. Mm -hmm. Very, very accurate. Uh, we're launching it with a stainless barrel, but we have others uh, which will reach in the market shortly. Very, very capable rifle. Okay. Very good. So unfortunately, um, we already hit some problems. We don't have the rifles here with us at the booth because they are stuck at customs, I think. Um, it is a little bit inconvenient now for all of us, but um, bureaucracy doesn't stop at borders. It's just we have good imaginations. We know what we're talking about. So yes, yeah, we unfortunately. Do. But and yeah. hopefully we can present those rifles in life, color and stereo in the future. Very much so, Because yes. they're very good, hooked up with one MOA. So we're really looking forward for it. Um, thanks a lot for your time, for introducing us to My your pleasure. rifle series and to all the fine accessories. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. So, Please me. Thank um, you. That's it for um, Enforce Tech TV at the 1MOA booth. See you next time. Thank you.